doing? Really? <laughs> um, so I, I am not a native Australian speaker. That was my one joke. Uh, how is everybody doing? So everybody's doing good. Um, a little bit about me, and then we can talk about letting the love flow. I had to create a title based on water, so it's usually called building the love, but we'll do it, let the love flow. And it's about building, putting love into your business and into selling and talking about how you, how you love your business. Um, so a little bit about me. I um, am not from sunny New Jersey. I always hate saying that. Uh, I'm actually from New York City. That's why I will be speaking fast. I will try to speak slow, but sometimes as a New Yorker, it's a little hard. Uh, I might use words you might not know, so let me know if I'm using words you don't know. I spoke, did a workshop yesterday and I realized there were some words that were different than you guys use, so that was cool. Um, and I have, so a big thing is I went to design school. And so I know design, I love design, I know what kerning is, um, but I realized pretty quickly that I sucked at it. And what I was really good at was the business end. So I ended up for about 30 years being a business consultant for creatives, and I help them in all areas of the business, including positioning and new business strategies and pricing and proposals and staffing and client and project management, all the stuff creatives hate doing. I actually love doing, who knew? And uh, even though my parents are really sad that I don't use my design skills, and I didn't design my book, and that was like their biggest disappointment. <laughs> I don't, like they weren't excited that I wrote a book, they were more bummed that I didn't design the book. Uh, and I love, I absolutely love what I do. And I, I develop new talks every year. And this is my new talk. And the reason why I've developed this talk is because I work with many, many creatives across the world. And I'm kind of sick and tired of them not, all the, the roots of their problem are around that they don't love what they do or they're not expressing the love that they do. And a lot of this can be solved by kind of in more infusing love in different ways throughout your business. And I'm going to hopefully cover a bunch of ways that you can infuse love into your business. And I really mean love, but I don't mean passion. So passion um, is really about like one moment in time, right? You get passionate at the moment, one moment. It's really about just long lasting relationships and long lasting love. So I will be talking about that. I'm hearing, am I talking to that? Stand back. Better? Oh, that is better. <laughs> good. That's good to know. I'm going to probably move. I move around a lot. I can't stand still. Um, OK. So first, you absolutely have to love yourself. Right? If you don't love yourself, then the clients and your staff and everybody surrounded by you will notice that. So if you're not happy at this one moment, and if not loving just who you are as a human being, work on that first. Because <laughs> honestly, a lot of my clients are just not happy human beings, and that is showing in a lot of areas of their business, and that's something I can't fix. I wish I could, but I can't. Um, so, oh, we have to, there we go. First, you must love yourself, sorry. Uh, then you have to love your business. And that means you have to love who you work with, what you do, what you deliver, kind of all aspects of your business. If you don't do that, then again, that shows through. And then lastly, you have to love everybody you work with. You have to like the clients you work with. If you don't love the people you work with, you're not gonna do great work. And that again is going to be communicated in how you talk to them, how you talk to your staff about the work you're doing and how you position yourself, and how you sell yourself, and how you talk about yourself on your website. A lot of my clients, when they write their websites, you can tell they're sort of partially humble and partially embarrassed by what they do, or not completely proud. And they're just showing work because they feel like they have to, but they're not proud of it. And so you have to be really proud of the work, and I know that's really hard necessarily with all projects, um, but it's about trying to find something that gives you joy, something that gives you love within the work you do and with everybody you work with, the vendors, everybody you work with, you should trust, honor, they should be human beings that you like. Some of this sounds obvious, right? But I have to tell you, it's not. And I'm hoping these strategies, these strategies when I wrote them up, uh, were very obvious to me, but I realized most of my clients didn't practice them. And so I'm hoping that some of these you already do and you might not need me. Uh, but maybe you don't, maybe you do need me. Um, so in business, love is reflected in a lot of ways, right? It's reflected in your culture. So even if you're a one-person firm or a larger firm, what is your culture like? 
Is everybody enjoying what they're doing? Are they kind human beings? Do they collaborate well? Is there one person, and there usually is, one person that's kind of hurting your rest of the team? Right, so I worked with a client the other day. They had, um, there was like an eight person team, and they had this one creative director that was like the best designer in the world, like just incredibly amazing, and was responsible for like 90% of the work that they showed on their website. And they, because of that, they, he, but he was also just a terrible human being, right? So they literally hid him in an office, away from everybody else. He was never allowed to talk to clients. He didn't talk to the staff, right? This is, this is what I deal with on a daily basis. And they were like, what do we do? I'm like, you kind of have to fire him. <laughs> There was nothing, they had done everything else. We worked with them to try to figure out how he can you know, get coached and get to be better at managing people. He just wasn't, he didn't have it in him. And the team was growing and they were like, there he's responsible for 90% of the work. I said, let go of him and you will find that the staff, the staff will step up, right? And sure enough, the staff stepped up, right? And so they had to let go of somebody that was just painful for the rest of the team and for their clients. I mean, they literally sheltered him from everybody else. It was kind of crazy. So culture is really important, and it's reflected in your culture. And there's always somebody that's poisoning the environment, right? Um, in how you talk to people and how you communicate with them, communication, I always say, is my magic answer to every single problem. Most of my clients call me on a daily basis for rather crazy issues, um, and <laughs> great issues that really challenge me. And, I'm always answering the one thing. I'm like, have you told them? Like, that's my always, like, they have problems with a client or they have problems with staff. I'm like, well, let's talk about how you communicate that. They're like, oh, I have to tell them? Uh, so daily interactions, showing that love, but also being comfortable and kind of having tough conversations. That doesn't mean you don't love them, right? So I always, I just did a workshop yesterday. I always ask this question, how many of you have dogs or kids? Nobody? <laughs> Cats don't count. So <laughs> if you have dogs and kids, right, you need to give them structure. You show them love. They love you. They're not going to go anywhere if you have to give them structure or if you have to give them consequences. It's like clients. If, you, if they love you first, then you have to give them consequences. They're still going to love you, right? So don't be afraid of building that love first because then it'll be much easier to manage all the people around you. Um, so it's in your daily interactions. It's in your tone of voice, how you talk to people. Am I kind of obvious? Uh, body language. So I have a tendency to do this a lot. Right? That means something not good. So I have a conscious effort to try to do this, right? to be more open. How you sit when you talk to people. I went to a meeting with a CMO of a big company, and it was like 15 people in the room, and he sat literally on a higher chair than everybody else. And he's like, I have a bad back. I said, sit on that lower chair. Right, he had to be part of the team, be part of the collaboration. He just wanted to be, he wanted to have the power. I didn't believe the back story. And he was fine. Oh, one more thing about you, two things you need to know about me, I always forget to mention this. I'm brutally honest. So that's why I named my book that. I really tell people what, what I think, but I do it with love. And so I care about my clients and I care about the creative community deeply because I'm part of the creative community. And I feel like we reflect, everything we do reflects on all of us, right? So if one person is, is having bad ethical practices, then it reflects on all creatives. And the other thing is I curse sometimes. I will try not to because I'm on video right now, but uh, I, I love cursing. Uh, you have to love your work, right? It's expressed through the work you're doing. If the work is solving problems and beautiful and doing all the things that your clients needed to do, that will, again, be very important and that will help you build the love. And in your pricing. If you don't value yourself, you can see it through the pricing. When I look at people's pricing, I can tell that they don't love themselves. They're a little bit insecure. Uh, it's really reflected in how you price and the confidence you project. Once you love what you do, pricing comes easier because you know your value and you're confident in your value. So if you're struggling with pricing, I would look at your confidence and look at your love. So I'm gonna give you some strategies for building love. And, okay. So the first strategy is 
You have to do you. Be authentic. So like I said, I'm brutally honest and I curse. I tell people that all the time because there are some kind of clients that can't work with me, and that's fine. So I always joke that I have no clients from the South. <laughs> I really don't. I have like two clients in Atlanta. Uh, because my style just is not appropriate for people in the South. They don't work for the, for the West. I have to go back again. Uh, I'm just going to keep looking at you to remind me to go back. <laughs> Uh, and it's because of who I am, right? I accept who I am as a human being. I have flaws and I have a style, and it's good for some clients, and there are other clients that are not good for. And so that's the same thing with you guys. All you clients have to identify, you know, who you are as a human being. Just do you. Just be authentic. Too many of us are trying to put like a veneer on, oh, I should be this way. And that is so clear. I have a business partner that I, well, I had a business partner at one point when I was doing a workshop, and she was sort of a fake person. She was sort of passive aggressive, and she was very manipulative, and she wasn't who she was, and she had difficulty, she was also a client at the time, and she had difficulty, she had no problem getting new business because she was a great salesperson, but she had difficulty with was retaining those clients. She had zero retention rate, zero. And it was because she wasn't who she was. And when I did a survey of her clients, it was pretty much that. They'd like, I don't trust her. There's something about it. It was just a person. It wasn't about her work. Her work was amazing. It was winning awards. It was solving her clients' problems. It was because she wasn't a comfortable person to be around. So being comfortable in your own skin is kind of critical. Again, obvious, but I don't think all of us are there. You have to love what you do, and you have to show it. So the show part is the one I want to talk about. <laughs> Uh, it's because how many of you haven't updated your website? This is always the thing. When I, when I talk to my clients or new clients, I ask them this question, which is, uh, when was the last time you updated your website? Or, or how are you doing new business? And they always say, I do new business to my website. And I'm saying, like, when did you update it? Oh, two years ago. So it's like magic number of two years that people don't update their website. So you have to constantly show your work, your newest work, your current work and talk about it and show it and, and be pr proud of it. So send them email blasts. Oh, you don't call them email blasts, you call them, I just learned this yesterday. EDMs, EDMs thank you. <laughs> uh, so you have to send EDMs out. I like that much better, actually. Um, so you, you send out EDMs once in a while to your clients just to remind them how, what great work you're doing, right? Because they're not gonna always go to your website. You should be ca you know, have some sort of handout that you can give people leave behind showing how the work. Uh, it could be on your business card. I've seen some ingenious ways. I have clients that have little postcards, which is sent little shots of their work, sent instead of business cards. So you should just be showing the work you're doing and be really proud of it and constantly always talking about it, always. Um, you need to make your clients look good, right? Because if you make them look good, they are going to talk about you. And by that, I mean it's not only the work you do, so they're, they're proud, pride, they can... Uh, show the work internally and feel proud, proud that they were part of doing this project, but also make them look good in terms of being responsible and organized and giving them the tools to show that their job shines as well. Right? He's a cute baby. <laughs> I love babies. Okay. Uh, so make your clients look good. Again, I know this seems obvious, but I don't think we help our clients make them look good. Right? So when we're in meetings, we should be professional. We should make them look good and make sure they're included in the process. If they, like if you're working for a nonprofit, as an example, and they have to present your concepts or your thinking internally to the board, because there's always boards and nonprofits, right? And you might not have direct access. You should give them a script. Give them the tools to present the work so that they can look good. Give them training. Right? Help them do their jobs better. We just get mad at our clients all the time. Um, I'm doing a talk in a few weeks on, it's called It's Your Fault, which is <laughs> it's my favorite talk. It's my new favorite talk. Uh, and it's because I think a lot of clients, we blame our clients for everything, almost everything. And we can't, just like we can't change our spouses, and I know because I've tried, um, we can't change our clients. We can only help them get better, but we can't change them. And we have to change our own behavior. What can we do to help them? Or do we have to fire them? That's a whole other conversation, a whole other talk. So make your clients look good. 
um, do truly great work that has measurable results. So by that, I want to focus on the measurable results part. You guys like talking about your work and like, oh, I chose this font because of blah, 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 or this image was because of blah, blah, blah. The clients don't care about that, right? What they care about is their metrics. How did you do increase, do you have ROI here? Return on investment that is still existing in Australia. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm using the right words. Uh, so it's about the ROI. How did you help their business change, grow, position themselves? Many of those things can be captured by numbers, and you should, giving them, you should help them track those numbers or help them identify what those numbers are and embrace those numbers. So a lot of creatives say to me, I don't want to ask about metrics because I'm afraid to hear the results. Right? But if you love what you do, you should be proud of the work and recognize it's not always going to work, but I will almost guarantee you that you'd be surprised if the metrics always are really good. But you should then also embrace maybe if the metrics aren't good, talking to the client to say, hey, how can we improve next time? If you identify that what we did wasn't working as well as it could be, what can we do next time? The client would love you because you're part of the solution rather than part of the problem. You're like, what's the next step? So trying to get those stories from the clients, a lot of times, um, I make some judgments about creatives, so forgive me, but I've been working with you guys for 30 years, so I have some general rules of creatives. And one of the things creatives do is they finish a project, and they're like, I'm done, and they move on. They're just so happy to get the project done, they move on to next fire. And they don't stay in touch with those people, they don't collect the, the data or the stories behind it. So always put in your calendar to collect those stories. How did we do? How did the work increase you know, your business? How did it increase anything, you know, attendance in an event, or your brand awareness, or education factor. How, how can we have done better? How can we keep moving together? How can we keep moving as a relationship, right? So staying in touch with your clients and collecting those stories and then being proud of those stories by featuring in the case studies, on your website, in your EDMs. Um, so making sure that the work you do, you absolutely love, you're really proud of it, and that it shows how it impacted the client. Again, if you make your clients look good, they will talk about you more. They'll be like, this designer was not only wonderful, a joy to work with, I love, and they want, if you want to hear that word, love. I loved working with them. I love the work they did, but they also had impact on our business. Um, you have to demonstrate your value at all interactions. So this means you sort of have to be on all the time. So when you're at conferences or events, you should be all talking to each other not like by the wall, not with your spouse, not with your business partner. You should be talking all the time to all these people. And, and if you love what you do, it's just a conversation, right? You're just so happy what you do and you want to, and you love who you work with and you want to talk about how great they are. That will shine through. But I think a lot of us don't do that. And in, in, in the interactions, they kind of um, turn inward. And it's about really showing that love for what you do, for the industry, for the kinds of clients you work with. And especially if you're an expert in their space, if you're an expert in a certain kind of industry, then you love that more deeply and you know that knowledge comes, comes through. So I have a client that works mostly with law firms and most of the creatives are like, ugh, law firms. You know, she loves law firms. I don't know why. It's her thing. And so when she speaks to other lawyers, it's, um, I don't know how it works, but she, it, she can tell she knows everything about their business and it shows this love for the business. And, and her, she talks about her expertise of working with different partners and being able to, to manage different kind of partner challenges. She actually is challenged by that and loves that, right? So each of us loves different things about our business and we need to talk about what is it that loves about our clients and our business and our staff and the work we do, right? Um, you, have, you have to be reliable, right? If you don't, if you're not reliable, your clients won't be reliable. And then you'll call me and say, they're not being reliable. I'm like, are you being reliable? Uh, so that means responding to emails. You should have a zero inbox. I'm sorry, but that's kind of a best practice, right? Don't be, uh, so many creatives are proud that they have 10,000 emails they haven't responded to, that is not something to be proud of. Um, and because clients are gonna talk about this. I have one client who I adore, who just is very proud of his 10,000 email in, inbox. And when I talk to other people, they always like, oh, I know who you're talking about. 
I spoke to maybe a 2,000 person audience in Canada, and I was telling this very story, and there was somebody in the front row who was like, I know who that is, I know who that is. <laughs> it's just, we talk about, you know, the clients will know this, and they get very frustrated by it, right? Um, and then they will not respond to your emails. So you have to lay the groundwork for good behavior. And I know, again, this seems obvious, but many of us ignore our emails or ignores our texts or however you communicate with your clients. You should be responding to them very quickly. That should be your main role because that's building love. That's showing respect, right? Um, so when I issued my book, um, I'm doing everything. I'm doing fulfillment. You know, I'm the self-publishers. I'm doing everything. I'm shipping them. I'm responding to emails. And I respond to the emails because I'm getting a lot of emails requesting different things about the book, like arguing about the price or whatever, and, or just questions. And I respond to every email within 24 hours. And almost always, I get an email back saying, I can't believe you responded. That's so nice of you. Like, they're shocked. Like, literally shocked that I'm, not res that I'm actually responding to emails. And I'm just surprised. Like, of course I would respond to emails. But, and that has built love. Like, people love that I respond to emails. And they're, they're literally saying these things out loud. It's amazing. Um, so just be reliable. And don't avoid being a communicator. For some reason, we're great design communicators, creative communicators, but we're terrible verbal communicators. And we avoid in-person conversations like the plague. We much prefer emailing and texting. And that's not a generational thing. That's not a technology thing. I think it's just a human thing that we've grown into. And we need to just have eye contact with people and face-to-face. -face. So embrace trying to meet with, you should have no client on your roster that you haven't met with in person. Because if you meet them in person, you've built the love. There's a human connection. They see what you wear. They, they, you talk about your family. You, you, you have much more kind of a connection with people. And they'll trust you more. And so I know in this day and day and age, we're a global world. And we have clients all over the world. But there's video chat. We still can meet our clients face to face. Because body language means everything. And seeing how they talk and, and being able to face them eye to eye really makes a huge difference. So when you have tough conversations, when you have moments where you have to build relationships and build the love, that has to be done in person. It just has to be. And I, I don't know why it is that we avoid that. I think we don't have time. We're really busy. It's so much easier to write a long email than to talk, talk to somebody for five minutes. right? And just pick up the phone to say hi to people once in a while, just to say hi. People always, when I call people, I'm like, oh, I was just thinking about you. Like, I'm in Australia right now. One of my clients had surgery like two weeks ago, and I, hadn't, I, I was concerned about her, so I just checked in with her. And she's like, I can't believe you're on vacation, and you're asking how my surgery went. Because I love her. I care about her. I want to know how she's doing. You know, And that builds the love. And that client's been with me for 20 years. right? Because it's somebody that I care about. I deeply, truly, honestly care about my clients. And, and my clients care about their clients, and they, they, those clients talk to each other and recommend you because they're just somebody that, they care about my business. They care about what I do. They love what they do. So try not to avoid the face-to-face. -face. Embrace it. So I typically say, like, once a week, you should have with existing clients face-to-face. -face. Kind of a general rule. Just make sure that you've spoken to your clients at least once on the phone or had a meeting with them. And any kind of clients or connections you haven't spoken to in a while, twice a year. Just try to put some metrics around, like, what do I, when do I reach out to them? Put it on your calendar. I should check in with them. Whenever my, my clients are pregnant or getting married or anything that's happening important in their lives, I put it in my calendar and I check in in a few months just to see how everything's going. And it's really authentic. I really do care. I'm not doing a fake. I'm not trying to get business. I'm just trying to build the love and show that I care. And then they care about me. So when I had a recent, I had a passing in my family, my clients were so amazed about, like they were so supportive of what I had to do to kind of adjust this. And same thing, when I went on three week vacation to come to Australia, most of my clients would not be patient with that because they knew I needed this so badly. And they were all really cool about it, right? They weren't kind of mad about it. Sometimes you get clients who get mad that you have a life, right? Uh, and so I think it's really about communication. I'm constantly in communication with my clients, and I teach them to be in communication with their clients at all the time. And not only with clients, with everybody you work with. Even with your ex-staff members, 
staying in touch with them because also if you stay in touch with them, they might come back to you later on or they might give you clients later on. I have uh, one client, actually the same client that doesn't return emails. Uh, he's a teacher and almost all his new business comes from his students because they eventually, he stays in touch with them for years and they eventually move in house and they're like the greatest designer I've ever worked with is blah, blah, blah. And he gets business from this because his students love him, right? And he stays in touch with them and he cares about where their career is going and he gives them referrals, right? At least, the, at least the students he likes. Um, you also need to support everybody you know. You have to be a kind human being. <laughs> Seems a little obvious, but I don't know if we're all very kind. <laughs> and I want to sort of embrace I think Australians are. Americans, maybe not so much. Uh, you have to be a kind human being by really caring about their lives and um, acknowledging their achievements. So if somebody gets promoted, one of your clients gets promoted or one of your vendors moves to another job. Anytime somebody's moving or changing or growing or a big life event happens, you should be supporting them. Calling them to ha say that you're so happy for them, congratulating them, not doing it by LinkedIn, right? Congrats. Did you ever get those congrats for like your work anniversary? I'm like, I had a work anniversary? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> that, that's not authentic. I'm meaning authentically. Like, call them, congratulate them on anything that has happened in their lives. Right? And again, staying in touch with them. I don't think, again, we get so busy, wrapped up in the latest fire, we don't think about our long-term relationships and staying in touch with these people and being part of their lives. So whenever, um, I always tell uh, my clients is that whenever your clients are speaking or have written content, shout it out, share it on social media. Right? Say, oh, I'm so proud of this client, they just had an article posted, blah, 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 check it out. Or they're speaking here. And people love that you care and that you're, you're, you're kind of sharing the love that they're, they're doing some great things for their career. Whenever my clients speak, and I can, I try to attend when they're speaking, and I always sit in the front row, so they know there's somebody there who loves them and supports them. And they always say, no, they always say, I'm so, I can't believe you came, that's so nice. Right, and it means so much. And I recently spoke at a, a type director's club, and she sat in the front row, and it was wonderful to have somebody who who I love and know in the front row supporting me. It felt so good, right? And I think that is really important that we share that love and show that love for our clients by being pride, you know, kind of shouting, shouting out from the rooftops all their achievements. Again, we're so busy, we just don't think about those things. And I think that's really important. Um, you should be really just having a good time in life. So take a vacation. <laughs> So many of us don't take vacations. Maybe Australians do, but in America, we don't take many vacations. Um, and it's really, it shows that you're unhealthy, right? So be happy, laugh, be who you, you are, you know, crack stupid jokes, dad jokes, whatever they're, you know, whatever jokes you have. Uh, be happy, you know, if you're not happy and, and embrace humor, it just, it it's, leaves for a very dull life, right? So, be just a happy human being, stay high. Talk to anybody you know. Talk to anybody you don't know. Whenever I'm in a subway or an elevator, I'm always saying hi, like the Uber fools. Do you ever talk to the person next to you? Just say hi. So many of them walk in there and they sit next to me and they're like, hello, and they're like, ooh, somebody just talked to me. You know, say hello to everybody. I have gotten clients and I've built relationships in the oddest places by simply saying hello, right? I've met clients on the subway. I've met people in the elevator. I've met a lot of people in the bathroom because ladies talk in the bathroom more than men do. Uh, so, you know, you can meet people just by saying hi. So be friendly and just say hi to people, including Uber drivers and your Lyft drivers. You have to be confident. That will, show, again, show love. And confidence comes through your pricing, it comes through how you talk about yourself, it comes through how you're standing, how you're dressed. So coming to, clothes, coming to work in yoga clothes is not showing love, right? Always show love in different ways. And that will help you come to, come to business, like when you're in conference calls, don't wear your pajamas, right? Dress up, wear some makeup. 
right? It makes you feel good, it gives you confidence, and that confidence will shine through. And if you don't have confidence, then look at the work, look at what you're doing and say, how can I gain confidence, right? So as a consultant, and I've been in business for 30 years, the industry changes, right? So I'm constantly needing to learn new things because otherwise I won't be confident in, in helping my clients. So if I need to learn the latest technology or whatever the new trend is, I'm gonna always try to learn so I can be confident and understand what I'm talking about and express that confidence. Right, so you have to be confident. Um, this is mostly for the guys in the room, but a, a lot for the women as well, which is um, you sometimes have to say you're sorry. That goes a long way. It's amazing when you, somebody says, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It impacts people. They're like, okay, I feel better, right? But a lot of us don't say we're sorry. We are fearful of the world. We don't own up to our mistakes. So it's okay when you make a mistake with a client to own up to it. Or if you mishandle the situation internally with your team. Say, you know, in retrospect, I'm thinking the way I communicated wasn't effective. You know, I'd like a do-over, I really apologize. I want to kind of communicate better to you. And that goes a long way because it's making a human connection. For some reason, we don't want to say we're sorry. Or, hey, I was wrong. Or how can we do better? So own up to your mistakes, your fears, and say you're sorry. I try to say, like literally, I try to really make sure every day, did I say sorry for something? Because I have a big mouth. And I'm sort of brutally honest. And so sometimes I think, say things that I'm like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Right? Um, and so I say I'm sorry, and we move on. I had a client that fired me, um, one client. I said something I shouldn't have said, and, um, but it was in a moment of anger, and I was just being who I was. And we let it lie for a few months, and then a few months later I called him. I said, I'm really sorry for what happened. I love working with you. I get why you fired me. It's perfectly cool. And he's like, I really, I really appreciate that. Thank you. We stayed in touch. He turned into a client two years later. You know, it just, the, and I'd worked with him 20 years, so sometimes 20 years is a long time to have some relationship anyway, so we were due for a breakup. <laughs> uh, okay, so be, uh, be honest, really important, be honest. You be truthful, don't try to lie, don't try to, you know, be passive aggressive, just embrace that honesty. It goes a long way, people really respect that. Say thank you as often as you can. Stay in touch, don't forget people. So you should have some sort of CRM tool, customer relationship management tool, a way to collect all the contacts and stay in touch with them that connects to your calendar to remind you who to stay in touch with, who's having birthdays, again, not through LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, and when you build a love, a few things happen. Clients will advocate for you. They'll talk about it, talk about you. They will defend you when you make a mistake because they love you. If they hate you or don't like you or you haven't built that relationship, they will not defend you. Uh, clients will send you thank you notes after working with you. Has any of you gotten thank you notes? That's because you're building the love. Clients will literally send you an email or some uh, like a handwritten thank you note. I have a post-it uh, notes of all the thank yous I receive just to keep me moving forward and giving me my confidence. When I have a bad day, I look at the thank you notes. Um, clients will take you along whenever they move to a new job. So if these things are happening, you're building the love. If these things are not happening, you're not building the love. Um, you will receive solid, qualified referrals on an ongoing basis. So not just referrals that aren't great. That's not building love. But referrals that truly value what you do and are the kinds of clients you want to work for and deserve. Um, you're the only firm clients will consider. So you're not competing against anybody else because you've built the love. They only want to work with you no matter what. They will do anything to work with you. That's building the love. Clients will work with you on your price. So if the clients love you, price doesn't matter. I guarantee you price is only a conversation with clients that love you. They'll figure out how to work with you. They'll even say you're pricing too low or a pain in the ass, price higher, right? Clients will ask your opinion and value it. You won't just be a pair of hands. Staff. Stay, staff will always leave, they will, but they might come back if you've built the love. They might turn into clients. They might refer other candidates to you. 
because they love you and they're like, you should work for them, they're awesome. And staff will spread the word about your firm. There's some challenges and then we can, um, I'll, after this I'll be signing books. Um, you may price too low, so love does come with challenges. And one of it is you love what you do so much, you price too low, right? So in, that's why I said love comes through your pricing, confidence comes through your pricing. Um, you do work that doesn't fit your vision because you're like, I just wanna help this friend out or this person is so nice. I just have to do this project, even though you really should be doing this project. Um, you cross the line from, from, from professional to personal, so you start dating your clients or other things happen with your clients. Don't get too close that it crosses the line, right? Um, and love when freely given duplicates and multiplies. The more you love, the more that love comes through. So I want to thank you for having me. Uh,